Hello, welcome to part 4 of the muzzle flash tutorial in Blender and I have finished rotoscoping in the last part I left you where I hadn't finished rotoscoping but now I've finished and as you can see the hand is tracked and the body, I roughly did the body and the arm it's pretty good the hand took the longest, we'll look at all those keyframes but I did spend a bit more time on the hand and the arms got quite a few, and the body doesn't have many. Just don't have to worry about that too much. So, I thought in this part we will get into the compositor, which is the good news. But first, we need to animate the alpha of our masks. And the reason behind this is if we don't, the white would be consistently on and, we, and it would mean the light would be always on our face and that's not what we want so how do we make it so that when the gun is shot on like that on that frame that the light the face the light is lit up no the face is lit up only on that frame well we can do that by animating the alpha so if we come to the material tab and we can forget all this and we go to transparency and you enable that and we have the alpha channel now the cool thing about blender is most most things are keyframeable all the options are you can keyframe ambient I don't know and anything besides a couple of things in the composite compositor but the majority of things you can keyframe so what we're going to do is keyframe the alpha at the point at which gun would fire. So I would say uh, that this frame, frame 3, that the gun has been shot. So that means this would be at 1. Full alpha, full light. Although we need to buffer the, the keyframes, otherwise let's say we put frame 3 at 1 and then we made the next frame 0 because it's going to be off again. Oh no, I like to have two frames two frames uh, between 1 and 0 so it kind of fades out quickly but nicely not just a sudden flash on one frame but then if we make the next frame 0 and then we keyframe frame there is it, that frame to 1 but if we don't buffer it between these 20 frames the alpha would gradually increase so the way basically buffering is we put 1 I mean 0 1 to 0 on one frame, 1 on the next frame, and then 0, or then maybe 2, 3, 3 frames later than 0. And then when you get to the next one, make sure you go 0 before you put the 1. That way it would ensure that between the, the shots that the alpha does not have a gradual increase, like, doo -doo 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 -doo, like that. So, uh, let's see, so frame 2. We're going to make that zero and in right click, insert keyframe, and we'll go yellow. Then the next frame three is when the shot's going to be fired. So we put it to one and insert the keyframe. Then on, then we're going to leave about two frames after. So frame frame five, I'm going to put this to zero. So what that will do is just have a nice gradual fade after the shots of the light on the face, the arm and the hand have like a nice transition fade out. Then we're going to scroll along and find the next shot which is here. So frame 28 we're going to insert a zero so to make sure it doesn't gradually increase. Then the shots here on frame 29 insert keyframe for one and maybe leave two is that 29 so frame 31 make that 0 so it has a nice fade out and then we'll do the same for the next shot which I think is about frame 50 there we go so 54 insert keyframe 55 1 and then maybe 2 frames later make that 0 again and then we scroll along I think it's about frame 80 there we go 86 insert keyframe one, two frames later, zero. There we go. So, save that. 
as you can see, if you watch the ALF, I'm pointing at the screen, how sad is that? <laughs> if you watch the alpha here, uh, you see it will increase, go down, increase, go down, increase, go down, and increase, go down. So we'll have a nice flicker effect. So you're probably w desperate to get into the compositing. So let's just go to frame 3 as that's one frame where the light's on. So we're going to hit control, no, not, not, not there. no, don't do that. We're going to hit control, left arrow to get into the compositor. Ah, what? where's our footage gone? Well, because we only set it on the uh, default um, view, viewing, we need to reset it. So all we have to do is hit N, background, oh, we, that's already GSL, GLSL, add image, camera, there we go. So now we can see the roto. So we're gonna hit use nodes. Ah, ah, this tutorial is just all over the place. Before we go any further, we need to set the render layers. So, uh, in the end, we're gonna have three render layers. We're gonna have the a render layer, render layer for the environment lighting a render layer for the muzzle flash and a render layer for the smoke so if you come under the render tab and go to the render layers here we've got our first layer so we're going to call this environment lighting and that's going to consist of all the roto rotos we did and that's going to only be layer one so you need to select layer one and you don't really need to worry about any of that and we'll, we will add the other layers later. So now that's done, we can head back to the compositor, and we have we've got an environment lighting. But first, we need to render. So let's hit render image. And what's happened? I don't know. Ah, hmm. <laughs> oh gosh, sorry. Uh, ah, I see. We're on the wrong frame. So make sure you're on the right frame, frame 3, we know that, there we go, and we know that is one of the frames. So we got our render layer, environment lighting, and now we're, gon go we're going to use these uh, white areas as a fact, the factor, because black doesn't affect, anything black isn't affected by the RGB curve, well not the RGB curve, the um, mixed node and everything white is affected. So we've got our uh, factor here. I'm now going to input an image. Well, I think they should change that. As it's actually, we're going to add the movie. So in here, we need to put this to 108 frames and make it also refresh. And then we're going to duplicate that, as you'll find out in a minute. And one problem is, as this some for some strange reason the scale changes so we're gonna have to go to distort scale and just do render size as that is already at 640 by 480 so plug that into there and plug that into the other one as well ah and just to say I'm not going to teach you how to use the compositor if you're already if you're following along good job if you're not go find some basic tutorials. So next we have our two videos and what we're going to do is a technique which I is kind of standard with any muzzle flash. We're going to add the scenes against themselves to ex overexpose the footage. So we're going to go to color mix and hit add. Now the fact value, we're also going to add a value node. And the reason for this is the the value uh, value node allows us to add more facts to than f more than five because five is just not enough. So I'm going to plug that in. Um, we're also going to get a viewer node here. Hit the backdrop, uh, and we're going to plug it in here. And we're going to just plug in the two. So at the moment we've got this. And then when we start to increase the fact value, you can see we get a nice overexposed image. And that essentially is going to be the brightness of the gunshot. 
but now what we're going to do is use the the white uh, rotoscope we we did to to uh, narrow down the effect to only those areas. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a uh, let me think a mix. Is it a mix? I think it's a mix. Bear with me. Um, so we're going to mix in. No, it's not a mix. Not a mix. Is it a mix? Yes, it's a mix. Or is it a mix? Not sure. I think it's actually we're going to add an alpha over. I think. I think. <laughs> Gosh. Um, so add an alpha over. Uh, I've just heard clicked convert to pre-multiply even though you don't really need to we're going to plug in that to the factor and this is going to be the top I think and we're just going to use you can use the oops oh god what's going on oh you can either use one or the other doesn't matter just make sure you don't choose the add so just we're going to plug that in to the other one and we're just going to plug this in the viewer. Ah, no, wrong way. There we go. And as you can see now, we've isolated the effect to only the the uh, black and white Bezier we had. But as you can see, there's some problems. It looks very sharp. It's, you know, we can obviously see that, that someone's masked around my face. So to to make the effect less harsh we're going to add a filter and add a blur node here so we're just going to plug that in there and plug that in there and we're going to put this to cubic I found Gaussian I don't know Gaussian is a bit weird cubic works nicely so you know 25 you can experiment as you can see as soon as you do that it goes off the hand a bit too much uh, yeah, you can just experiment with the amount of blur, not 55, 5, Five's a bit too, not enough, you can still see it. If it's too bright, you can pull down the value. Uh, I'll probably actually just run this at 20, otherwise you, it is a bit too sharp. Um, and cause, because there is this spill into the vi the background and we do want to isolate it to the hand what we could have done is rotoscoped it you know this this in pull this in a bit closer to the hand but just for the sake of time let's, let's go back to frame three uh, I'm just gonna put in a dilate erode and what that will do we just kill the distance a bit. That'll just cut down. It cut down, cuts down on the lights, but it also chops down that a bit. And you still get the effect. It looks fine. So we've done that, and that so far is the lighting. So some things you can do. This increase this value will increase the light, but again, it's a, a battle between the erode and the amount of light and yeah I don't think do we need that no you don't really need that but you can check it anyway if you feel like it so that's part four for you I think it's part four uh, so um, so you make sure you finished your rotoscoping we well I forgot where we've done that we animated the alpha we fixed the render layers and we started the first part of compositing so that's part four in the next part we'll be looking to add the muzzle flash and perhaps we'll also add the muzzle flash uh, lighting but the difference I'll do is I'll actually in the when I tested it I didn't uh, exclude the muzzle flash Bezier circle from the this render layer but what I might do is move it onto another render layer and that way it will I can blur it more and make it look less 
um, make it more subtle. And if you're just curious to see what we did here, this is the alpha or the factor. Oh gosh, the factor amount of the light. And then when again when we compose it, looks like that. So yeah, some things you can also do. If you're not happy with the color, you can before you plug it in, we can add a RGB curve here. You know, pull the contrast down, make it red. We can maybe pull up, pull down the reds a bit. I'll pull it up actually. Now nah, that makes it too green. <laughs> um, maybe pull an S curve. Yeah, I don't know. You can mess around with the coloring, the lighting. That actually looks quite good actually. Uh, you know, this is all very experimental. I just figured this out the other day. No, oh, quite like that. That looked quite good. And also the the poor video quality doesn't help. But yeah, so that's part four. And see you in the next part where the mother flash. Bye bye.